In the heavyweight division, your referee from Moorestown, New Jersey, Rudy Battle. Judges, Lynn Carter, Eva Shane, and Frank Brunette. Introducing, first in the red corner, he is wearing turquoise trunks, weighs in at 207 pounds even. His professional record, 10 wins, only five losses, 10 big knockouts. From Atlanta, Georgia, here is Mike Dixon. Dixon. A less than rapturous reception. His opponent in the blue corner is wearing black trunks trimmed in red. He weighs in at an even 233 pounds. His professional record, 20 wins without a loss, 17 via the knockout route from London, England. He is rated in the top 10 by every boxing organization in the world. Here is Lennox Lewis. Lewis. 10 rounds, Rudy Battle, your referee. It's the fight that Lennox Lewis okay, dare not lose on his way into that big clash with Razor Ruddock. At all times. Let's have a nice, clean fight. Good luck to both of you. Let's touch gloves. Touch up. All right. Well, I say dare not lose. He ought not to lose it as well because Mike Dixon really is nothing much more than a journeyman. He's won 10 fights all by knockout, but he's had five defeats as well. And he is strictly in the limited category. He's lost his last four, and Lennox Lewis's camp really taking not too many chances here. If he was to lose this one, it would be an absolute sensation, Glenn. That's right. I think really they're, they're doing a wise thing. They're taking this fight just to keep Lennox fight fit for his upcoming fight with Razor Ruddick, and it's a sensible match. Lennox Lewis hasn't fought since March when he beat Derek Williams. Not everybody was that impressed with him that night. Didn't look so good until he delivered the punches to put Williams away. But Lewis, I think one thing is becoming clear about him. He just does enough to win. He will not extend himself much above that. He's dominating here in the first 30 seconds. Body punches, jabs, and treating Dixon almost like a punch bag in the gym in the opening 40 seconds or so of the contest. Yes, he's done very well, getting that jab off and the jabs landing straight away and pulling up with big right hands to the body and the head. Watching at ringside is the man who faces Lennox Lewis in that uh, huge clash at Earl's Court at the end of October. Donovan Razor Ruddock will uh, hope to grab a word with him at some point during the contest. Lewis unbeaten in 20 contests so far, 17 of them inside schedule. The former Olympic super heavyweight champion. Lewis with four first round knockouts, Dixon with five, but they have been against uh, opposition of the has been or never was variety. This looks, looks the sort of fight that Lennox will be able to take his time, will be able to do pretty much what he wants to do and open up when he wants. Dixon is just walking forward, trying to keep his hands and really putting Lennox on the north that a good right hand there, very sharp. doing more or less what he wants in this opening round and not very much coming back from Mike Dixon, formerly of Bristol, Tennessee, and now Atlanta, Georgia. Lewis is doing some good shots going in, but just as he comes out, he's leaving his chin up in the air and his hands down, which I don't think Dixon's going to trouble him, but he's going to have to be careful against Ruddick. It's the one thing we'll find out for certain when Lewis fights Razor Ruddick is his ability to take a punch because Ruddock hits mighty hard particularly with the left hook last 10 seconds of an opening round which has predictably enough been dominated by the British European and Commonwealth heavyweight champion Well, there's Lennox. Uh, I suppose the problem really, they want to shake off the ring rust for him as we just look at this action from the first round, is whether Dixon 
can provide a meaningful enough kind of bridge between the Williams fight and the Ruddock one. Well, I don't think they're looking for, for something that meaningful. They're just looking really to, to get him out in front of the public, let him you know, feel he's in a fight, and let him do some things. Just keep the rust off. He's got a, a big, big fight against Razor Ruddock coming up in October, so really he just needs to keep busy. I think Lewis's corner will be home and that Dixon is maybe durable just to keep in there for, for a few rounds to give Lennox a bit of a workout. Otherwise, if it's, if it's a one-round blowout or a two-round blowout, it's a quite meaningless experience. So they'll be home to get a few rounds of work and you know, it's, it's always better than sparring. Lewis, by the way, with a new trainer these days, had him for the Williams fight as well, Pepe Correa, the man who used to be with Sugar Ray Leonard. Razor Ruddock, in recent fights, has been working with Floyd Patterson, the former world heavyweight champion, who's been trying to get him to use his jab more. Good right that time from Lewis. He's just looking, I think, at the moment, Dixon, to look after himself and survive. Whether he does that, I don't know. That's another big, long right. He's already... Hits Dixon with a lot of shots. He's landing, he's nice and accurate, and nice and sharp. And he's landing well with that long right hand. A very fast punch. Mixing up the shots to head and body. Lennox Lewis. In the last couple of years, he's recorded some good wins. Knocking out Mike Weaver, beating Gary Mason, my mate Glenn here, Tyrell Biggs, Levi Billups, Derek Williams. He's definitely upped the quality of the opposition that he's been putting away. But it's another step again up to the Razor Ruddocks and Evander Holyfields of this world. But it must be said, it's, it's good to see him taking on an opponent like Ruddock. You know, he's, he's trying to prove that he is the best in the world and all credit goes to him for that. Yeah, I take my hat off to him. It may be a risk, but uh, we criticise boxers for dodging significant fights enough. And Lewis certainly isn't doing that. Well, I think it's the, the best way to do it and I think we'd, if a few more fighters had the same opinion, we'd have some great matchups. using his jab well that's good i know they've been working on that and he's gonna have to, to use that punch well against ruddy to keep him away <laughs> dixon is shaking his head and smiling as if to say well you're hitting me but you're not hurting me but the reality probably is that he did hurt him yes i think it's okay to do that if you've got a, a bomb of your own up your sleeve but uh, dixon may not be getting hurt now but he, he soon will I must say one thing I do like about Lennox Lewis is that uh, he has this ability to fight in gears. He, he tends to just switch off for periods, but then he can up the pace suddenly. Razor Ruddock working at ringside with Al Albert and Sean O'Grady, our uh, American colleagues. Remember old Sean O'Grady fighting Jim Watt on a famous night in Glasgow. Well, Razor Ruddock is at ringside. I wonder what he's making of this Lewis performance. You know, Lennox is doing what he has to do to win this fight. He's back, back boxing and moving, and he's not taking any chances. And he's hitting the guy with some beautiful shots. But apparently, the guy is a very tough guy, and he's not going down. Razor Ruddock. And you couldn't really argue with uh, that assessment of things. How impressed Ruddock is by all of this. Don't know really. He's not the kind to be that impressed that easily. After all, he's been in with Mike Tyson a couple of times and held his own pretty well. A rare occasion where Dixon actually lands with the jab. He's heavily outreached by eight inches here, 83 inch reach of Lennox Lewis. And Lennox is getting a, a good workout here. He's pretty much been able to do everything that he wants to do. Get off him, get off him. Nice. Step back. That's it. But I hope he's not going to go in with uh, Razor Ruddock no, with his gloves down by his waist. 
No, I'm sure he won't. I mean, that is one of the things that's concerned me now and again. Just as he comes out against Dixon, he, he drops his, his right hand very low on his chin up in the air. Obviously, he feels that the threat's not there. That's going to be there with Ruddick, but it's bad habits and he doesn't really need to do it. Still hammering home those ramrod jabs, Lewis. He's been keen to point out in the build-up to this fight, some people wondering whether he might desert Britain and go back to uh, Canada or America. But he says, I'm a true Brit, and when I fight for the heavyweight title, it will definitely be for Britain. You can count on that. And that's good to hear him say. Dixon with the reputation of being brave and strong. He's been a good puncher against the novices. His best win was over the veteran ex-cruiserweight Tim Bullock, who he beat in five rounds. This year, though, he's lost on points to Alexander Popov, to Corey Sanders, the South African. And in July, he lost to Bruce Selden, the former heavyweight prospect. I say former because Selden has rather been found out over the last year or so. But at least he went the distance with them all, so it'll be interesting to see what, what Lennox can do with them. He's never been stopped, actually, this fellow Dixon. Fourth round. Can Lennox Lewis become the first man to stop Mike Dixon? Well, I think you have to say that it's so far not much more than a gym workout for Lewis. But he's starting to crash home some quite heavy shots here. Uppercut, body shots. And Dixon having to cover up. And I think he's been hurt a little bit. He's reeling. And Lewis is unloading the big bombs now. I think he thinks it's time to get him out of there. He's getting a standing eight count. Dixon. Referee Rudy Battle from New Jersey. Do you want to go on? He's saying. He nods. Not very convincingly. Breathes heavily. But Lewis here could be on the verge of finishing this off. Another crashing right, and this time Battle says that's enough. Dixon goes through the motions of protesting, but the protests didn't look entirely uh, wholehearted, did they? No, he took some good shots there, and it was a good time to call a halt. And Lewis did exactly what he wanted to do. He, he boxed well, used the jab. It was a nice workout for him, and when he wanted to unload, he did the job in good style. Well, Lennox Lewis did absolutely nothing wrong here on his way to win number 21. But in truth, I'm not sure how much all of this proves by way of his credentials against Razor Ruddock or Evander Holyfield or Riddick Bowe or any of the other top boys around. But uh, take nothing away from Lennox. He's getting the job done, and that's what he's done in every single fight so far. Yes, he got the workout that that was needed just to keep him taking over till the Riddick fight. And it was good. He was in front of, the, of a crowd. He got to do what he wanted. It's certainly a lot better than, than doing it in sparring. Now you're looking at the face of the man who could be Britain's first world heavyweight champion since Bob Fitzsimmons way back at the end of the last century. It could happen. It really could. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here is the time. One minute, two seconds of round four. Referee Rudy Battle puts an end to the proceedings. The winner by technical knockout, here is Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis, ladies and gentlemen.